Bilalay, the top bab, and your next choice is Bilalay. Now, he was the man who started it all, or wasn't he? No, I don't say Bill Haley started it all, but you got to remember when he came out with this song, Rock Around the Clock, I worked in a place called Melmont, Pennsylvania, which is right outside of Philadelphia, where Rudy, his bass player, came from there, and his sax player. And there used to be a club called Materials Tea Bar I used to always work, and they would always come in, and we'd sit down, and we'd laugh. And this is how I met Bill Haley before he got hung up with Alan Freed and the rock and roll shows that they put on around New York City, Pennsylvania, and around the country. But I always thought that Bill Haley had a good rocking band, because in those days in America, they were saying white people could not play blues or rock and roll, and Bill Haley proved them wrong. He proved to be a good one. He was, he was good. Cool, huh? He was cool. I he like was him. crazy too, no? He ended up a bit of a loony. Rock and roll, can it destroy your life? No. Was it? No. No. The police said that in every country. <laughs> But the police is the one that caused all the problems. The police didn't want black kids and white kids dancing together. Before rock and roll, they fight. They were cutting and shooting one another. Rock and roll, they started dancing. It changed everything. Not only in America, all over the world. You know that for a fact. Uh, oh, come on. Yes, you know that. Okay, let's watch good old Bill Haley doing rock around the Let's floor. listen to Bill Haley right now. Bill. Now, that was a strange character. He was a oh, bit of a wet. Oh, that man was crazy. He was a bit of a wet, he was a meat packer in Chicago, and suddenly it just came to him, the twist. Do, did you play no, with him? No, it didn't just suddenly come to him. No, Phil, <laughs> let me tell you about this chubby checker. All right. I remember working in the early um, 50s, a place called the Howard Theater in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. At that time, chubby checker was trying to be like Fats Domino. All right. But what he did, he couldn't use the name Fats Domino. So he says, I'll call myself, instead of Fats, I'll call myself Chubby. That's right. Instead of Checker, I mean Domino, I'll call myself Checker. So he's Chubby Checker. He says, now I'm going to take Hank Ballard's song, yeah. The Twist. All right. And I'm going to redo this song, because Hank Ballard had two million sellers on this song. Chubby Checker put the dance to it, which became worldwide known. Chubby Checker did The Twist and came out done shaking his big old fat body. <laughs> And he made money, 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 calling himself Chubby Checker. And I said, well, what about Hank Ballard? Well, Hank Ballard made money also because of writing. But the thing is, he made a bigger hit and popular with the song than Hank Ballard. And for that, I didn't like Chubby Checker, but I give him credit for being able to make money with somebody else's song. A lot of people have covered your song and put a spell on you. What do you think of those covers? Marilyn Manson did it last year in that yeah, movie, Lost, Lost Halloween. Halloween. Yeah, What I, did I, you think? Well, I think they're all crazy. David Bowie did it, The Crazy World of Arthur Brown. Creed's Clearwater did a splendid version. But the one that stands out in my mind more than anybody else was Nina Simone. All right. She did an operatic version of Spell, and I couldn't believe it. I listened to it maybe these times, and I said, I can't believe this woman. She's good, but she made me angry last year because she put out a book called I Put a Spell on You, her autobiography. And she says, I was overwhelmed when I heard Alan Price's version of Spell. And I said, Alan Price? I know Alan Price did a cover, but when she first did it on her album, it says, I Put a Spell on, she says, when I saw Screaming Jay Hawkins do it, I fell in love with it. Now on her autobiography, she gives Alan Price credit. That turned me against Nina Simone. Okay, anyway, let's watch Chubby Checker, The Twist. Here he is, Chubby the Checker. If your next choice, Screaming Jay Hawkins, you've chosen Chuck Berry. Oh. Could you explain to us memories of Chuck? Uh, everyone says very tight with money, it's very difficult. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to answer that question. The best way I can answer is to say that before I met Chuck Berry, I liked every song he put out. And then I did a motion picture with him in 1977 called American Hot Wax. Yeah. And it was about the life of Alan Freed. Mm -hmm. And the income tax people come in and took up all the receipts. And when Alan Freed told Chuck Berry in the movie, we have no money, I can't pay you. Chuck Berry's famous words was that, rock and roll has been good to me. I will do this for rock and roll. And there's where I turned against Chuck Berry because he ain't never done nothing for nothing. <laughs> He's the type of person, if he comes here and he does a good show, beautiful. But if he goes off the stage and you want him to come back, do an encore, he'll say, put $100 bills under the door. 
And when he's got enough hundred dollar bills, then he'll come back and do an encore. I'm not the only one that knows that. Anybody who worked with Chuck knows that. Yeah, it's true fact. Huh? I know, I know, I know. You see, you can't do to the people what you think you're some kind of king and queen, because the people made you. Without the people, you're nothing. And that's what Chuck Berry forgot. Okay, anyway, we're going to watch him. Okay. Right now, we're going to give you this crazy man, yeah. Chuck Berry. All right, Memphis, Tennessee. A revival. Ah, uh, Tom Fogarty. I remember Tom Fogarty because... Tom Fogarty, Tom Fogarty, two brothers. Yes, but it was Tom that sent me a letter, Philip. All oh, right. He sent me a letter and thanked me for writing Spell. And if I was to see them tomorrow, I'd say, oh, good, good, because I love Crazy and Flat. There's nothing bad I can say about I just love them. They're good band, they're good act, and they sing good. They had a good record of Cruise and Clearwater Revival. I put a spell on you, and I'm very pleased to be on your show and tell the people now we're going to listen to Creedence Clearwater Revival. You, wow! <laughs> <laughs> All right. The show is going to be Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers. That's a very sad story. It is. It is. Because that guy was gifted. He had everything. He had, he had the world in his hand. Yeah. He had he, the whole world must, in his hand. We must hand. tell the people in TV land, because maybe they don't know the story. Frankie Lyman was a kid. He was a very young kid. He was as gifted as Michael Jackson. He had a great, incredible voice. He was beautiful. He was singing. He had the, the dancing, the choreography. Absolutely. The brothers were with him. It wasn't like the Michael Jackson thing, because in the early 50s, Frankie Lyman was the Michael Jackson of that time. Since his death and since he's over, and now Michael Jackson is another type of Frank Lyman with a new name, Michael Jackson. But the difference was that Michael Jackson is not with his family where Frankie Lyman was. In fact, he had a brother named Louis Lyman, uh -huh. had, had a group out too. But the problem with Frankie was he got caught up in the dangerous world of drugs. And that's what Heroine. killed him. Hero yeah, that's what killed him. And I'm very sorry about that because I like Frankie Lyman. You never get into drugs if you are still there today, huh? No, I have been around everything in the world. And I found out if you can't control it, leave it alone because what's it going to do? It's either going to turn you against your friends, your people, your wives, your home. You're going to rob, you're going to steal, or you're going to get killed, you're going to march, you're going to be dead. There's no future in it. Leave it alone. I used to drink. I don't drink no more either. But I found out that I'm better off if I just control Jay Hawkins and leave everything else to everybody else. That's right. That's a beautiful message. It's the only one you can live by. I'm still alive after all these years, and I'm grateful for that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's watch is, uh, this Jen Pitney character. Oh. That, that's the whitest of the white singers, wasn't it? He's the one person I've never met in my life. I've never seen him. But I was struck crazy by that one record he made called Town Without a Pity. Oh, yeah. When I heard this record, and I was living in a place in Atlantic City where I didn't like people, they didn't like me, and I had a bad relationship down there, and I felt I was in a town without pity. So I fell in love with Gene Pitney's town without pity. It was America maybe a country without pity, and that's why oh. you're living in France now? It's a country without pity if you're nor. Noir. I have to say that, because that's black. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of problems even to this day in that country I was born in. If you ask me why am I in France, that's one reason, yes. I'm not ashamed to admit it. That's one good reason. There's a lot of good black artists in France today because of the problems in America. And the problems ain't going to go away because there are a few of us who will talk about it. We can't change it. When you can't change something, leave it alone. Get away from it. That's the thing to do. All right. That's why I'm in France. Okay. So let's hear town without pity. Jen Pitney. Woo! Of course. It's the voodoo man. It's the...